So finally, we're seeing some Marvel sets come through the grapevine of the whole LEGO YouTube Summer 2021 reviews. And this video is no exception. This video is going to be on the Ironmonger set, a set I've been really, really hyped for and unfortunately very disappointed at. But we'll get to that later on down the line. First off, I want to start with some of the minifigures for this set. Jumping straight into this, we get Pepper, Iron Man, and Obadiah. And why don't we start with Obadiah? He is a fantastic looking minifig, and it really captures the look of Jeff Bridges with this new face print. I actually really like the way this figure looks, and don't actually mind that we have no leg printing with him, and his torso print is actually really nice as well. Unfortunately though, there is no back face print, but that is obviously because he is bold. So the minifig has no hairpiece. This is unfortunate because I would have liked to get an angry face but obviously in doing so they probably would have had to give an extra head so I'm in a way glad but in a way disappointed really would have liked to have an alternative face for this character but hey ho moving on we're moving on to Pepper Potts now this Pepper Potts figure I was really excited for but unfortunately this seems to be one of those figures that Lego have been quite lazy with using a reused head and it's not the same head that we had in the Iron Man 3 sets meaning the only exclusive thing on this figure is the torso print which is a fairly disappointing print it's accurate to the scene but unfortunately without that leg printing to really complete the look it kind of falls short of what I think this figure should have looked like but that's probably because they put all of their money into this Iron Man figure and finally we have the Mark III and I get to start talking positives about this set. The Mark III has been missing for so long and I can't believe it's taken them this long to release it however I'm slightly glad because all of this printing is immaculate. I'm so happy with the leg printing, I'm really happy with the torso printing, and they've even given us some extra detail on the face mask, which does lift up, thank god, to represent those screws on the top of the helmet. Now I'm so glad they've given us the old helmet mold back, I genuinely was super worried to the point where I made a video about it and it's now one of the most popular videos on this channel, if you haven't seen that one yet you can go into the link in the description of this card in the upper right hand corner, talking about how I was worried about the whole new Iron Man one piece mold helmet and how I'd like to see this new two piece helmet come back and obviously as multiple people have now confirmed based on the leaks and now obviously people having the set it is the two-piece helmet and it's actually got the updated tony stark head with the blue heads up display on the inside printed on the head i'll be very surprised if this iron man suit doesn't hit 10 pounds on the aftermarket being that most iron man suits hit that 10 to 20 pound mark and I hope this is the start of LEGO giving us more Iron Man suits like the Mark IV and the Mark VI that we're still missing. Overall, the minifigures in this set are okay. I wouldn't say they're phenomenal. The Iron Man figure is definitely the best one out of the three. However, would have loved to see some exclusive leg printing on Pepper Potts just to make her look more accurate to the scene. Now let's move on to the actual set itself. Now a lot of people are actually quite sick of Marvel creating nothing but mechs pretty much at this point. As for every single wave, we do tend to get one. And I will admit it is getting pretty mech heavy. However, this is a total understandable set for LEGO to produce. I just really have some questionable things about why they released it in this way. And I'll get into that, but we'll start off with the positives of this set. I genuinely think this really does look like the Iron Bunker. I especially love the extra additions of the stickered elements, and I really do like that printed face, as well as most of the pieces being molded in this nice shiny gunmetal grey, rather than just dark bluish grey. And I must say, when I saw those hydraulic tubes on the back working when I moved the arms it did Just put a smile on my face and as much as I do think this is an awesome action figure for a kid this set does have its fair share of problems which I'll address now First off, I just want to address that this set has clearly been based on the Pancake Head Hulkbuster suit from a couple of Marvel waves ago, which unfortunately means it suffers from some of the same problems that that one did. Granted, they're not as bad as that Pancake Head, but I must say this similar arm mechanism, where they're just so jetted out far from the body, makes him look really, really wide-shouldered, and I really don't like this look. Thankfully, they give him shoulder pads, which does sort of help the issue, but unfortunately, because I've noticed how wide these shoulders are now, I can't really unsee it, even with those shoulder pads and i think this is due to the shape of the body ironmonger's body is basically a massive ball and unfortunately this one just isn't a massive ball so it kind of defeats the objective and it's clearly based on the old model another thing that arguably this ironmonger set is worse off for is the fact that it doesn't have leg articulation now it has feet articulation, but because of these A-frame pieces used on the model here, it means the legs are constantly locked off in this bent position, which kind of makes him look like he has gorilla arm. Maybe it was because they didn't want to put an extra hydraulic thing in there? 
But still, I think this is a piece of articulation they really needed to create some really cool poses out of this guy. And it's annoying because the upper half of the body is actually really well articulated. Like I say, it has a waist joint, it has individual finger articulation, the arms have a ball joint in the elbow sockets, and not only that, when you move the arms, these hydraulics on the back move, and that's not even counting the weaponry that he has on the arms that are fairly secure to the arms and can be used to launch studs all over the place. And it can still hold a minifigure. Obadiah can easily fit inside the Ironmonger, but unfortunately this does release another problem that I have with this set. Because the head is done in such a way, the pancake head actually works better on the older model, as it completely covers where the minifig lies. This head doesn't, and it actually really doesn't feel like there's a spot for this head to go. When first building this on my stream, I did notice that there wasn't really anywhere for this head to properly sit. There's kind of a cheese slope there to stop it sort of coming up when you don't want it to, but there's no dedicated slot for the head to sort of slot into, and that's in its closed position. And the back of the head just looks completely disgusting compared to the absolutely amazing print they've got on the front. Even down to the joint, if you put the head too far back, this piece just falls off. And even though it's got a really nice face, print I feel like the back of the head just feels like an afterthought and it's not up to the level of quality control I expect from Lego and like I say because it doesn't cover the minifig properly it means that you can see the minifigure which for a suit of armor isn't very secure now I understand it's Lego and it has its limitations but this isn't something that I feel like had to be a limitation. I feel like LEGO have just looked at their previous model and said, yeah, let's just use the same body design because it works rather than actually come up with something new. And I honestly think this problem might have something to do with the biggest problem about this set. Because they've picked a body from a previous model, they're stuck working at a specific size. And everybody's already said this about this model. This model's way too big. It doesn't scale well with the other figures. Now, I know sometimes minifig scale doesn't really matter and it shouldn't matter. But in situations like this, I do believe truly that it helps, especially sell to that more collector community like myself and a bunch of other AFOL fans. Now, I'm not saying this set is mainly focused towards adults because it's not. This set is honestly excellent for any child who is a fan of Iron Man. And it's at a price point which I believe any kid could easily just pick up and buy in a shop. But I must say, for me at least, I feel like this set is way too big and it's perfect for a child collector, but maybe not an adult collector, which is annoying because most Marvel fans are teen and adults now. And honestly, because of the scale, I think this just looks silly next to normal minifigures. And most people have seen that. They just forgive it because this is better than nothing. And like I said, this set does truly look like Ironmonger, but the scale just really throws a lot of people off, which is why I personally feel like this should have been one of the more £10 mechs, just thickened out and given a few more pieces, as you would have been able to keep the articulation because most of it's made of ball joints, and given us a print on a 2x2 two two dome piece rather than this giant piece for the head. And hell, you could have kept the same price point, even though it's one of the £10 mechs. You could have included Pepper in a car or something along those lines, as this fight scene happens on a highway, meaning that LEGO could have kept their Mark III armor in a £35 set. Not only that would have been better scaled, kids wouldn't have cared because they would have been getting a mech anyway and also a cool side build of a car or something like that justifying that extra price point. Overall, I think this set is a really, really nice set, but it does have its fair share of problems. A set I like to compare it to is the Night Bus from Harry Potter. Now I understand there's a bunch of licensing fees and there's going to be different licensing fees from Marvel and stuff like that and piece count and blah 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 but none of that really matters. The reason I like the Night Bus so much and consider it such a high set on my list is because not only is it £35 being a cheaper set, it's perfect for kids as well as adults. Not only is it a really cool bus build for the kids, it's also a perfect scale meaning it'll fit well with buildings and other Harry Potter things that we have as adult collectors. Whereas I I feel like this Marvel set is perfect for the kids. It's a really, really nice scale for kids, but unfortunately for adults, it's just not one of those higher grade sets I would consider in the same league as something like the Night Bus. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you really like this set? Do you completely disagree with my points? I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say about this whole endeavor, about the whole size comparison and stuff like that. Should it matter? Shouldn't it? Let me know in the comment section below. I just want to give a massive shout out to Bid, Tommy Rich, Zero Fox Given, Pixel Craftian, Rosie Alpaca, Brother from Another Brick, Vicinity, Revenge, Brightest Witch Bricks, Miles Hinsley, Dustin Martin, iLazyBoy, and Tech Productions for helping support the channel thus far. That's all I have time for today, guys, and I will speak to you guys in the next one. Goodbye.